Hello and good morning, Crofton High School learners taking the Foundations of Computer Science course for the fall 2021 semester. In this video tutorial and solution set, we're going to be taking a look at the X Spot Challenge, which we did in unit number three, lesson number five, bubble number eight, which was the free play bubble in code.org. Now, as a reminder, this was the challenge that we had in front of us. We were going to create a series of ellipses and we were not going to use any of the numerical values for either the X or the Y coordinate. In other words, we're gonna be exercising and practicing using our assignment operator with variables. We're gonna be declaring these variables first. So in other words, we're gonna be instantiating the variables. And then we're gonna be assigning values to those variables and then reassigning values to those variables. Now, there were a number of different approaches that were used in order to get this accomplished. And I'm gonna talk about a number of those different approaches. And we're also gonna see how you can combine operators. In other words, how you can combine the assignment operator or the equal sign along with the addition, the plus sign or the minus sign. And so I'm going to show you some different ways that we can approach this. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here. And I'm going to pop out and we're going to go to code.org. Now, remember to get to this activity, if you were to log in and find our section, you should be in Unit 3, Interactive Animations and Games. If you were to scroll down here to Lesson Number 5, Variables, you can see we have Bubble 8 for Challenges. And it's right down here, D, which is going to be our free play. So after clicking on bubble D under lesson five uh, unit, or I'm sorry, under a lesson five bubble number eight, here we are in the free play workspace. Now, one of the things that I typically recommend is that we make this area a little bit larger. And one of the first things that you wanna do is you want to show the grid. Now, I'm also going to be demonstrating using blocks as well as simply typing in the code so that you'll have a feel for how we might do this using either just simply typing or if you're more comfortable using the blocks. So where to begin? That's really the first question here. Now, we know that the very center of the grid is at 200, 200. Right? And so if we were to take a look back at the image we're trying to draw, we can see that the blue circle is here. Now, from the center, we're simply going diagonally three circles. Now, I'm going to use the term circle, but realize that the function that we're using, and remember the JavaScript function, that is the name of the function, and these are the parameters of the function. Remember, the parameters are inside the parentheses. And so we're gonna have three circles going up from the center diagonally in both directions, both left and right, as well as three circles coming down our grid, again, both to the left and to the right. So one of the most popular approaches, oops, sorry. One of the most popular approaches I saw was to go ahead and start with the center circle because that's the easiest of the circles because we know that the center of our grid is 200, 200. In other words, the X coordinate is 200 and the value for the Y coordinate is 200. As a reminder and a refresher, remember that when we're talking about X, when X is moving or X moves, left to right horizontally. And you can see as we go from the left to the right, the value of X is increasing here. And it'll go all the way up to the very corner, which is 400. And see, we can't get it to say 400 there, but 400 is the very right-hand side of the grid. The very left-hand side of the grid with the X coordinate would be zero. And you can see here up in the upper left, X and Y are both zero. But remember, with the X coordinate, we're moving from left to right, we're moving horizontally. And as we go from left to right, the value of X increases. Now, with Y, 
When we're on the Y axis here, or the Y line that represents Y, as you can see the value for Y, we go vertically or up and down. And here is where the value of Y is increasing as we move down in our grid. So X moves left to right horizontally, Y, when you're moving along the Y axis, moves vertically or up and down. X, the X value increases as we go from the left to the right, and the Y coordinate value increases as we go from the top to the bottom. And that's something that's gonna be very important to keep in mind. So 200, 200, this is where we wanna place our first ellipse or our first circle. Now, remember, good coding practice, we should put some comments in here. And so in other words, I'm just gonna put two forward slashes, and let's go ahead and put down program name, and I'll put X spot challenge. And then we'll put in here, oops, sorry, we'll put in here by, and we'll say Travis Bonfili. And you could put the date in here. And we'll put down for December 2021. Now, I like to put an empty sort of comment there just as a separator from the rest of the comments. So let's talk about first, how would we put an ellipse, a blue ellipse, in the very center of the grid? Well, remember, when we talk about sequence, sequence is very important, and it'll be very important in this activity. So what if I was to say ellipse, whoops, sorry. What if I was to say ellipse, and again, once you kind of type it out, you can go ahead, and I'm again, I'm typing it out here first, not using the block. I'll show you what it looks like with the blocks in a second. And I said 200 comma 200. Now remember, if you see the yellow yield sign, that means that something is not correct. So remember, in JavaScript, for the code that we are writing and for our purposes, we wanna get into a good habit of putting a semicolon at the end of every line. Now, what if I remove the semicolon? We have the ellipse here, or I'm sorry, we have the uh, yellow triangle indicating that we're missing the semicolon. What if I run the program? You'll notice that the program runs. So it's going to work, and that's because the JavaScript interpreter is going to automagically put a semicolon there for us. However, we should get into the practice of putting the semicolon at the end of the line. Now, semicolons in JavaScript have an entire life of their own, and there are many semantics or details around their use. However, you'll hear me say a lot for our purposes. So for our purposes and what we're doing, we want to have a semicolon at the end of each of the lines. Now, there is our ellipse, and we saw that the ellipse that gets drawn is just simply the default color of gray. Now, something else to notice is that we don't have the height and the width variables or I shouldn't say variables, the height and the width parameters, I apologize. We don't have the height and width parameters inside of the function here. And that's because we're using the default. And remember, the default height and width of both the rectangle and the ellipse is 50. So the default height is 50 and the default width is 50 for both rectangles and ellipses. So we don't need to put in here comma 50 comma 50 oops sorry comma 50 again it's the default so we don't need to have it in here i noticed a number of learners putting all four values in here again this isn't wrong but it wouldn't be considered optimal in other words we're putting additional code in here that might make things a little bit more confusing when in fact those are the default values and we don't need to see them. So let's go back to our conversation on sequence. So I say ellipse 200, 200, and we get the ellipse there. So what if I wanted to fill the ellipse and make it the color blue? And again, we see this little triangle here, missing semicolon. Remember, at the end of every line that we are doing in our context here in code.org, we're going to be putting a semicolon for now at the end of every line. So now sequence, right? Remember, sequence is simply the order of things. And in this case, it's the order in which we enter in the two lines of code. First, I say, draw me an ellipse with the default height and width and place it 
at the x, y intersection of 200, 200. Now, again, we know that is, and I'll get to see if I can't get the mouse on there 100%. So there we go. So the x, y value is 200, 200. And so my question that I ask in class a lot is, based on the ellipse, where does the ellipse or what part of the ellipse gets placed at the x, y intersection, at that x, y axis? And remember, it's the center of the ellipse, or in this case, we'll call it a circle, right? The center of the circle is what gets placed at the intersection of the x-axis and the y-axis. And that's where the circle is going to be placed. Now, going back to our conversation about sequence, the first line says, draw me an ellipse and place the center of that ellipse at 200x, or x is going to be 200 and y value, the y value will be 200, which is dead center here. And then we say, fill it with the color blue. In other words, color in the circle blue. However, the order in which we've declared these things to happen, the sequence that we have asked these things to happen in, is backwards. So we told JavaScript, draw me a circle, put it at 200, x 200, y 200, and it did that. And then we said, fill it blue. Well, it's too late for that because it's already drawn it using the default height of 50 and the default width of 50, placed it at x 200, y 200, and filled it with the default color, which for us is just simply this gray color. And so sequence is very, very important. So I, if I want to change the color of the ellipse, I would want that code to precede the creation of the ellipse. In other words, the sequence should be, the order should be that we declare what color we're going to fill the ellipse with. And then we say, draw me the ellipse. And that is the sequence. And this is why sequence is important. So as you can see here, we have our first ellipse at 200, 200. Now, the problem with what I've just done is yes, it works. However, let's refer back to the challenge. Your ellipse functions should only look like this with an X and a Y not like this. In other words, we should not be using numerical values down here. We should be using variables that are representing the value. Now, sorry about that. that did, I did not mean to flip over there. So there were a number of ways that this got interpreted using X and Y. So let me go ahead and start out by first creating the variables and then let's assign our initial values to those variables right here in our program. So something I might do is I may come down here and put an extra space and then put a comment in here that says creating my variables. And I'll just leave the word global out for now. That'll be a conversation for later. I'll say creating my variables. And I always like to just do dot, dot, dot. So how do we create variable names? Now, this is where I'm going to create or instantiate my variables, right? Now, I've switched over, uh, or I'm on text. Let's switch over and see how we would use the blocks. And so here's what the blocks look like. So here are my comments. And you'll notice that these are sort of a gray color. And then you have sort of this teal color, this greenish blue here, that we're using for our drawing blocks. Well, we need to use some of the variable blocks right now. So how do we declare and assign a value to a variable? Well, we would come down here and say var, which is how we would define the variable or create the variable. And you can see here it's x. And then I'm going to put in the value. And we know that for the first ellipse, the value needs to be 200. Now I'm going to grab another var block here. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, Mr. Bonfili, how come these both say x? Where are the blocks for y? Well, remember, we can simply change by clicking in the white area right here in the block, and we can change it to y. So now I'm going to say variable x 
gets the value 200. Remember that it's tempting to say variable, the variable X equals 200, but we want to try to get in the habit of saying X gets the value 200 and the variable Y gets the value 200. So now that I've created the two variables, and remember we think about the variable as a box and inside the box, we're going to put some value. So in the box, that is the name lowercase x. And remember the names are case sensitive for variables. Variable names also cannot begin with numbers and they cannot contain any spaces. So inside the box with the label x, we put the value 200. And inside a separate box right here with a label of y, we're gonna stick in the value of 200 as well. So let's go ahead and come down here because this is where we're going to say for our value X and our value Y, we're going to use the values that are currently inside the X box and the Y box, which is 200 and 200. So let's run this. Let me go ahead and click reset and say run. And there is the same blue circle. And remember our sequence, our order of operations down here is now correct where we define the fill color first, and then we create the ellipse that will be filled with that color. Now that is an example of how we might use the blocks. Let's flip back to show text and let's see what this looks like with just the show text. And there it is. And you can see it's a little less busy when we're using just text to create our code as opposed to using the blocks. Now I will continue to move back and forth between the two so that you can see examples of each. However, let's now move on and let's get rid of that extra space there. Let's now move on to creating the rest of our circles. And so let me put a little comment in here, creating all of my circles. All right, well, here's the first circle, and this is the circle that's dead center in our grid at 200, 200. So now the question becomes, which way do we wanna go? Do I wanna do these three circles here, going to the lower left or the lower right or the upper right or the upper left? Again, it's really up to you. Now, when I'm looking at this, I see these two, four, six, eight red circles. So let's tackle these eight red circles here right away. And I'll just start going from top, uh, top to bottom and then left to right. So we're going to do these four on the left hand side first, and then we'll do these four over here on the right hand side. So this circle right here, which just simply comes up diagonally from our center blue circle is going to be right there. Now, remember, as we move to the upper left, you'll notice what is happening the X value and the Y value are both decrementing or they're both um, lowering by an amount of what? If I put the center of the circle here, it's no longer 200, 200 like our blue, it's 150, 150. So again, it's always a great idea to put the show grid checkbox on so we can see the grid because if it goes from 200 by 200 to 150 by 150, and then 100 by 100, and then 50, and I'll see if I can't get it dead center there, 50 by 50. So as we move from right to left, in other words, along the Y axis, I'm sorry, the X axis here, moving from left to right, and as we move along the Y axis going from down to up, we're noticing that our values are decreasing by a sum of 50, right? So that should be pretty easy to sort out. Now, I'm gonna show you what I saw one learner doing here, and let's do the first red circle. So I'm gonna say fill, because remember, we're gonna be filling it red first before we then go ahead and say ellipse. Now, I had one learner who was putting in the variable X, right? Now, the value of the variable X is 200. So if we know that we want it to go down by 50 along with the Y for each of the circles, the red circles we're going to have, we could say ellipse X minus 50 comma Y minus 50. Now let's see what happens when we run this. 
the circle is in the correct position, right? Because that is that red ellipse, which is horizontally up here from the blue circle moving this way. The next one's going to be here at 100, 100. But it's here where we have to say the following. Now, I also saw learners doing this. They would say fill and they would put in red again. So they would redeclare the fill and then they would come down and do an ellipse. And the learner that I saw doing this would say X minus 100 comma Y minus 100. Now, is this code going to work? Because again, you can see what the learner is doing here. When they're trying to draw these circles that are going diagonally up and to the left, they know that every circle is going to decrease with the XY coordinates. The XY coordinates will decrease by 50. So they just continue to take 50 away. So let's run this and see what we get. And again, it works. However, you might be noticing that maybe we have some redundant code here. Now, if we're doing all of the red circles first, do I need to come down here and say, fill red, draw the circle, fill red, draw the circle? Or could I simply do this and say, fill red, draw the first ellipse, or draw the first circle, draw the second circle. Let's see what happens if I run that. Aha. So once I declare the fill, the sequence would be that if, if you declare the fill to be a certain color, that all shapes you draw after that using the shape function with these parameters inside the parentheses of the function will be that color. And so this works well for creating the red circle. So we say fill red. And then again, we've got these values in here, this X minus 50, Y minus 50, X minus 100, Y minus 100. Now, let's go ahead and go back and look at the requirements that we had. So the code I just showed you worked. worked. However, your ellipse function should only look like this. And you can see we should only have X comma Y. So then that's going to beg the question, well, this works, but how might we do something similar without having sort of, you think of it as the mathematical operation here, taking the value of X, which is currently 200 and subtracting 50, and then taking the value of Y, which is 200 and subtracting 50. Now, again, this works, but that's not what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and let's remove this. I just wanted to show you there's always more than one way to accomplish things when you're programming. However, here we've got some very clear instructions on what our code should look like. Now, because we can only have the X and the Y inside the ellipse function, using X and Y as the parameters, what we're going to do now is we're going to do what we call a reassignment. We're going to reassign the value for X and Y. Now, this is a common mistake as well. You do not have to recreate X like this using the var statement. You don't have to do that. Once X has been created here, and we've assigned it some kind of a value. And again, we, we wouldn't even have to have assigned it a value. We could assign it a value later. But once we've created the variable x, we no longer have to say var x to recreate it because it already exists. So I can pull that back right there. And what I can do is give x the value of 150 and then I can come down here and say Y has a value of 150. Now, sequence is going to be important here. And you'll notice that the variable block says assign a variable, assign a value, right? So X gets the value of 150, Y gets the value of 150. And I'm also going to do this. I'm going to put a space here to give us some logical separation for what we're reading. So this is my blue circle. Now I'm dealing with the red circles. So if I set X to 150 and Y to 150, let's see what happens. Now, 
I'm going to leave the second ellipse there to show you something. Where is the second ellipse, the second red ellipse? Where did it go? Well, because we set x to 150 and y to 150, both of these circles are right on top of each other. So this one is on the bottom and this one is on the top. And I can prove that by changing the fill color. So again, let me prove to you and we'll make it yellow. So let me prove to you that the second ellipse, this ellipse here, is on top of the first one, which is supposed to be red. And there you go. And that's proof that we did that. Now, the question is to you, why are these two circles on top of each other? Why is the second circle, the second ellipse, on top of the first one that we drew? And it's because we haven't changed the x, y values again. So here I say x equal 150, y equal 150. Well, if I do it for, um, oops, sorry. If I do it for, I didn't want to get rid of that statement there. So if I do it for the first red circle, let's go ahead and do it for the second one. So I could say x equal, and we know that we're going down by a value of 50. So x is going to be assigned the value 100, and y is going to get the value of 100. And so now let's go ahead and say ellipse and let's put X comma Y. And again, semicolon at the end of every line. And let's redraw these. And there we go. And so this works. So again, we declare what color we want the circle to be or the ellipse to be. Then we go ahead and put the values in here, decrementing by 50 each time. And again, here we're kind of doing the math in our head. Now, Again, this will work, and there's nothing wrong with this. However, let me show you another approach that we might want to use. And again, this is a very valid approach because we know that the value is going down by 50. So we're kind of doing the math on our own. However, what if you wanted to do, have the, the code do the math for you? Well, what I could say is the variable x is going to get the value of whatever X currently is in this program as the program is running here. And right now we know that X is 200 minus 50. Now, do I need the spaces around the minus sign? No, however, I like it in there for readability. And so I'll show you a comparison here. So we would say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean minus uh, 150. I wanted to put in here minus, oh, I did 50. Okay, good. So X, or I'm sorry, Y minus 50, and then a semicolon at the end of each of the lines of code that we're producing here. And so all we're saying here is that X, which is currently 200, is going to be reassigned a new value. There's our assignment operator. We're assigning a new value to X, and that new value is going to be whatever X currently is, which is 200 minus 50, which we know is going to be 150. Let's test this. Let's rerun the program, and there it is. So you get X now with a new value. And, and this is where um, I'm going to enter in or reintroduce you to something that we saw that came up that did cause a little bit of confusion. And that is, well, how do I know that it's 150, right? How do I know that this, what these values are right now? Well, we can print something out to the console, the debugging console down here for JavaScript. Now, the way that we do that is we use that sort of weird looking console.log um, function. And this is more of so what they call these sort of methods, uh, but we'll call we'll go we'll stick with function right now. So we're going to use this console.log. And inside of console.log, inside of double quotes, I can have some sort of a sentence here. And I could say the current value of x is now. And now we need it to tell us what the value of X is. Well, how do we do that? Well, we simply reference the variable. So I would put a plus sign in here and then the letter X and then a semicolon. Remember at the end of each of our lines, we need that semicolon right now. And then let me put a little space in here for that logical separation. And we're also gonna be putting another line of code in here. So let's run this now and let's see what it says down here. 
we'll take a look at that. The current value of x is now 150. And if I wanted a space after the colon, we could do that as well by just dropping a space inside. Now remember, inside of the double quotes, and you could also use single quotes, we call this a string, right? So whatever we have inside the double quotes of the single quotes, this is a string, which is why the variable is outside of the double quotes. Because you can see, that is not referring to the variable because it's inside the double quotes. It's referring to the literal, and you'll hear these referred to inside the double quotes or the single quotes. You'll commonly hear it referred to as a string literal, meaning that is referring literally to a lowercase x, not the variable. To refer to the variable, I need it outside of the double quotes because the variable this x over here, this is not a string literal. It is representing the variable x. All right, so now if I was to rerun this, you can see, and I'll click off of the x there, you can see that we see what the value is after we have done the reassignment of the variable, or, or the reassignment of the value. So now inside of the box with the label x, is the value 150. And all we would have to do now is copy this code here and drop it down here and change this to Y and change the variable that we wanna see the value for to Y. And now when we rerun this, we see the current value of X is 150, the current value of Y is 150. And the beauty of these two lines of code right here is what happens when I copy these, and what if I wanted to see what the value, and let me, I think we're out of order here, give me one second. So we've changed the value, let me pull this back up. And this is what we're going to want is we've got x equal to 100. So again, I can do like a little tricky math equation here. Now remember, what is the value of x now? Remember the sequence. We're reading the code from left to right, but more importantly, from top to bottom. So when we get to line number 21, what is the current value of x and what is the current value of y? Well, we know they're 150 because we just printed it out. So now what we're doing is we're putting a new value inside of the box with the label X and we're putting a new value inside of the box with the label Y. And here, again, we did, we're doing the math in our head. However, let's change this, right? Let's let the code do the math. And again, it looks pretty familiar here, doesn't it? In fact, this is the exact same code that we had above where we said, and again, we don't need to declare the fill to be red again, but for the second ellipse, we say x equals x minus 50. And again, what's the current value of x? Well, when we get to line 21, because it was decremented by 50 up here, we know that it's 150. And so if we reassign this value and put that value inside of the box with the label x, we're gonna end up with 100. And we've got the messages down here, the console.log function is going to print out for us what those values are when it goes to draw our ellipse at x, y, and a semicolon at the end of the line. All right, well, let's run this and see what happens. And there we go. So now that we have this block of code, I can simply grab this and copy it, right? And you can see how convenient this is going to be because when I hard-coded the value for X and the value for Y, when I hard-coded it, and hard-coding means when I put right here, did the math in my head and then put the number it would be, I wouldn't be able to do this because I'd have to go up here and change that value. However, when the code is doing the work for you, this is how you can do it and save yourself a lot of typing. So now I just decrement it by 50 and let's run it again. And there we go. We get the third circle up here because as we move from the center of our grid to the upper left-hand corner horizontally, the values are decreasing. Both the X value and the Y value decrease by 50. And so we can reuse this code. 
And is that not totally cool, right? We're able to sort of reuse code that we've already created that we know is going to work for us. So this is also one way to do it. Now, well, I'm going to transition. So we've got these three, I'm sorry, these four circles here, but we've got something we need to address up here in the upper left-hand corner. And let's take a look back over here and it should jump right out at us that that's supposed to be a green circle. So again, let's go back to the top of our code. We've got our comments. We've got our initial creation of the variables and our initial assignment of a value to each variable. And then we draw the first circle in the center. And then from there, we're going to go diagonally to the upper left. We simply take the variable and decrease the value or decrement the value by 50 for both X and Y. And isn't that convenient that I can just then copy and paste the code. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the circles that go from the center here diagonally down to the lower left hand corner and it, let's go ahead and move our mouse and again look at the grid telling us exactly what we're going to be looking at here so now as we move from the center of the grid horizontally to the lower left hand corner of the grid the x value because we're going left the x value is decreasing by 50 but we're going down and so the y value is increasing by 50. So instead of X gets X minus 50, or I apologize. So we're going to keep the X getting is going to be assigned the value of whatever X currently is minus 50. However, for the Y value, the Y variable, its value, we're not going to be subtracting 50 because as we go diagonally down, we go downward here. What is happening with Y? Y, the value of Y is going up right? So let's go ahead now. Let's hit space space. And so here we've got a question though, right? So the value of X and the value of Y are both currently 50. So we know that there's a couple of ways we could deal with this. I could do sort of this type of a mathematical equation or I could set the values back to what they are, or I could simply use the mathematical equation that would get us back here to 150, 250, right? So I could say X equal, they use the assignment operator, X equal, um, and it would be X plus 150, but we're not gonna do that, right? So we know that if we start at 200, 200, we can then just kind of copy and paste our code and save ourselves some typing. So here's what I could say. I could say X gets 200 and then Y gets 200 when we start again here, right? And this is, again, there's many ways you can do this. This is just simply one way that we can approach this. So now let me go ahead and grab this code here and I'm gonna reuse this code that I know that works but we know that we're going to leave the X the way it is because we know as it moves down to the lower left, it's moving to the left. And that's the key. Remember, X moves from left to right. The X axis, we're going from left to right horizontally. However, the Y value is going to increase because we're moving down. Remember, Y, the Y axis, we move up and down the Y axis or vertically along the Y axis. So... We've got another thing that we need to deal with here, and that is that the fill, I'm sorry, and let me take a step back. I should have dealt with this right away here. So the last circle we drew, I went away from that. The fill should be green, and we need a semicolon at the end of the line. So now let's rerun this to make sure that it works, and you're going to see that we're going to get this new or actually we don't have the ellipse, or we do. We're going to get a new ellipse. It's going to be gray. It's going to, I'm sorry, it's going to be green because that was the last fill statement we used, right? But you can see what we did. We reset X and Y back to that center position. So now I can simply cut and paste and reuse this code. However, we want to make sure that we get the right color for the first two circles, meaning we're going to use fill red, right? And so that's going to redefine 
the function fill and the parameter is the string red, the string literal, which is the name of the color because it's a string literal because it's inside those double quotes. It could be single quotes, but we're using double quotes here. Just make sure if you're using single quotes, be consistent. If you're using double quotes, be consistent. So let's rerun this and let's see now that this looks exactly like the circle we want. Now, I'm going to re I'm going to change this right here because this is really going to be sort of the final iteration that we're going to take a look at as to how we can do the assignment of a value to a variable specifically when we're using math like this. And we or I should say you know like a mathematical type equation here which is x minus 50 and y plus 50. There's a shorthand way that we can say this, that will shorten these two lines. Again, these lines up here are correct. There's nothing wrong with those lines. But when we talk about optimal code, right? Optimizing your code, here is what you might want to consider. And that is, we could say that X is going to get the value. Oops, sorry, we want the minus sign there. I apologize. So X is going to get the value of X minus 50. And so we say minus equal. Now down here, we would say plus equal, right? Because, and this is sort of shorthand. Remember these two things, and let me get my drawing tool out here. These two syntaxes, that is the exact same thing as this in terms of what it's going to produce. And that is the exact same thing as this. But you can see it's, we refer to it as kind of like shorthand of consolidating the statement. And so this is just a shorthand way to say that right there for the variable X. And this down here is a shorthand way to say that for the variable Y. Both are correct. Both are correct. Both are going to produce the same result for us irrespective of which one we use. In other words, that means that it doesn't matter which one we use, it's gonna give us the same answer, all right, or the same value. However, this definitely shortens up what we have to type. And so now I'm gonna use this going forward. So let's go ahead and let's finish this up. Because if I start here at the center at 200, 200, can I not simply grab, and again, we don't need the fill statement, I'll drop that out. Because once we've defined that fill statement, everything that follows will be that color. And so we can drop that in there and I can copy and paste this in again. And here is where we're gonna need the next, the new fill statement. And let's go up here and take a look. And it's gonna be orange. So let's come back here and let's just put in our fill, the fill function, and the parameter that we're giving the fill function is orange. You could give it the RGB code if you would like. However, it's a lot easier just to type in the names of the colors for our purposes here, right? So hopefully you've seen what we're doing here. Again, we redefined or basically put new values inside the box with the label X and a new value inside the box with the label Y, and then we immediately subtracted 50 from the X value, but then we added 50 to the Y value. So let's rerun this code and take a look at that. Isn't that fantastic, right? That we're able to reuse our code to make this a lot easier for us. All right, so now we've drawn the upper left-hand quadrant. We've drawn the lower left-hand quadrant. So now let's go ahead and finish this up with the upper right-hand quadrant. And so what I could do is I could simply say X equal 200, Y equal 200 to put us back at the starting position so that then I can come up here and say, all right, now as I move into the upper right, What's going to happen? Well, the X value is because we're moving to the right. So the X value is going up by 50 for each of the circles. Do you see that? So it goes from 200 to 250 to 300 to 350. So X is going to be incrementing or increasing by 50. But what's happening with the Y? Remember with the Y, as we go down in the grid, the Y value increases, but we're going up. So it's going from 200 to 150 to 100 to 50. So Y is gonna be going down. So what do we need to do? Again, 
let's just grab this right here and we'll copy it. We'll paste it right here. And what do we need to change? Remember, the X value is increasing. The Y value is decreasing. And so then we have our console messages. Again, don't forget these. These are actually printing out down here the value of the X, Y coordinate position for each of the circles that are being drawn. Now, our fill initially, or I should say right now, is going to be red, right? Because remember, the first two horizontal circles off of the blue circle will be red. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. And there it is. And if that code worked, I can simply copy, paste this in. I don't need the fill statement here because we've already declared it. And let's rerun it. And there we go. So now we're up here into the upper right hand corner. And this was the circle that caused some intrigue because this, when you look at it, you might think, well, is it purple? Is it violet? Is it magenta? Is it chartreuse, right? What, what is this color up here? So we, again, as long as it was close, I'm going to use magenta because I think magenta is as close as, as, as it got to being this color. Um, and down here, you can clearly see it's yellow. But again, we're just going to use magenta. As long as you were close, you were okay. So then let's go ahead and copy our code. Let's reuse code that we already know works, saving ourselves a bunch of typing. And let's change the fill. Oops, sorry. And so the fill function is now going to contain a parameter. That parameter is a string literal. And I think I said I was going to use magenta. And let me get your opinion here. What do you think? Let's rerun this. And I think that's a pretty close match. Maybe a little too bright. Some people used violet. Let's see, violet. And I know purple did not match up nicely. Violet might be a little bit closer. Yeah, we'll stick with violet, right? Okay, so now we're done going to the upper right-hand side. So what are we going to do? Well, we could start back at the center. I could say X is 200 and Y is 200. And again, there's nothing wrong with me opening up the box with the label X and putting a new value in. That's what we're doing here. Every time we do this reassignment, right, of a new value, just think of it as you're opening up that box with a label X and putting a new value in. And then you're opening up the box with a label Y and you're putting a new value in. And then we can use these values to our advantage. So let's see what happens as we move down in the grid on the Y axis. The Y value is going up. And you'll notice we're moving, we're going to the lower right hand corner. So we're going from left to right horizontally. So X is an incrementing or increasing by 50. And Y is also incrementing or increasing by 50 each time to get us onto that very center position for our circle right here to make this look horizontal. So let me grab this code. Let's copy our code and reuse the code that we know is working. And we're going to make sure that every time we create a new ellipse, that we add 50 to the X coordinate value and we add 50 to the Y coordinate value. And remember, the first time we run this, we want it to be, or the first two times, we want the fill to be red. So let's click reset and let's click run. And there it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this code here because now this is the accurate code. We could leave the fill statement in there, but there's no need to because that's kind of an extraneous um, line of code, right? It's not needed because we've declared the fill to be red up here. So let's rerun this again. And there it is. And then one last time, I'm just going to copy that code I just used. And this is the advantage of letting the code do the math for us and us not having to figure out, okay, well, if it's 200, 200, all right, then it would be 250, 250, and then set the X and Y to that, and then have to figure out, okay, then we add 50, so it's 300 and 300, or we're, you know, subtracting from Y and adding to X, or adding to X and subtracting from Y. And so these are all things that you want to consider when you're creating your code. Now, remember that bottom right-hand circle is going to have a fill color of yellow. Right, let's spell yellow correctly there. And typically what I like to do is at the end of my program, I will put a comment that says end of file, right? So that I know where that my code ends, right? We know where it starts with all of our comments up here. And we know where the code ends because I've got a comment that says end of file. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to increment x by 50. We're going to increment y by 50. 
and their last values were 300, 300. And let's see what those values are now. And there we go. And you can see those final two values for X and Y are 350 and 350. So let's do a quick review of our code here. We've got our comment up here at the top because we know who created the code, the date that I created it. And then I've got some comments in here. I'm creating my variables and I create X and I create Y and I also assign values to them at the same time. A quick sort of a go back here. Remember that I could have done this as well. And the video showed us that we watched earlier in the week that you could say var X and var Y. You don't have to assign a value to those initially. And then I could come back and say X equals 200 and Y equals 200. This is another way you could do it. However, just like I showed you this format, for changing the value of X when we know we're gonna be decreasing by 50 and changing the value of Y when we know we're gonna be decreasing by 50, why not consolidate the code and sort of save us from having to put in multiple lines of code when we could kind of be sneaky here and get away with that. And again, let's rerun it, make sure that everything still works. And there it is, there is the X spot challenge. So then I'm, I leave a comment here that I'm creating all of my circles. So we start with the blue circle in the center. And then I showed you sort of one way to have the code do the math for you. And then I showed you sort of a more optimal way, right? Of how to get the math or how to get the code to do the math for you. We also looked at the console.log message. And we can now use that to maybe troubleshoot. Maybe my circle's not where I thought it would be. Let me print out the exact X and Y coordinates. Here's the code to do that. And then finally, we talked about code reuse. If I'm gonna be going in the same direction here, and it's gonna be in the same increment for that direction, which means either you know going up by 50 or going up by 100 or going up by 200, whatever the value may be, I can reuse my code. And if we have to change the fill, then we go ahead and we do that. And that would be making sure our sequence is correct down here. Because we saw what happened up here. Once I declare the fill to be red, all circles that I'm creating after that will be red until I change the fill color. All right, Crofton High School learners, that is going to do it for this video tutorial and solution set on the Unit 3 Lesson 5 Bubble 8 Free Play X Spot Challenge. If you have any questions, please be sure to see myself or Mr. Devane and enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and have a great day.